a long time ago I read an article titled The Human Moments at Work. In this article there were cases of employees who were sending voice messages and emails to one another, and there were a lot of misunderstandings, abrasiveness and doubtfulness in this communication. This was because of the use of this technology that did not allow employees to show their body language and emotions overtly. The author of this article suggested that there should be more human moments at work, moments where employees can connect on a mental and emotional level, and they can develop trust and cooperation bonds. I was intrigued about this and I wanted to know more. I started the long process of research which was coronated by my new book, The Art of Compassionate Business. Throughout this process, I asked myself a very important question. Is love an important factor for business activities? You might think about love in a sentimental way. Love that you feel for your family, your partner, your friends. But here I am talking about a much wider connotation of love. A more humanistic one, which includes compassion, empathy, support, care, affection, generosity, gratitude. And this can apply to business relationships and non-business ones. Montagu observed that love is one of the most important human needs, like food. Hamilton observed that we are naturally hardwired to behave in a loving manner. Griffith observed that we are instinctively inclined to behave in a loving and supporting manner. My definition of love is quite simple. It's the natural enhancer of any human quality. It's the allower of meaningful communication. It's the pacifier of any relationship conflict and is the most important factor of any relationship, business ones and non-business ones. When I presented this topic to my clients at work, my students at university, and one of my previous publishers, they look at me with their eyes wide open. They stare at me surprised. They told me, Bruno, there are no loving companies. There are no compassionate companies. I know, I understand. There are many well-ingrained assumptions which support the fact that many companies do not behave in a loving manner. They just look for profit. You might have seen companies that fire employees mercilessly, companies that exploit employees, companies that deceive customers, companies that pollute the environment contributing negatively to global warming, and companies that develop win-lose agreements with suppliers and other business partners. These are not examples of loving companies. Besides, many companies are not so keen on pursuing love in their business activities. They are more keen on pursuing what we call key performance indicators, such as profitability, productivity, and efficiency. They are not so interested in love. Many companies tend to focus on quantitative aspects of business, what can be measured what can be counted, such as profits, market share, sales. They are not so interested in qualitative aspect of business, what cannot be measured, what cannot be counted, such as companionship, camaraderie, affection, compassion. And many companies tend to use words connected to the military discipline, such as strategy, tactics, they are not so interested in using words connected to love, affection, compassion. On the other side, there are arguments for the relationship between love and business activities. Daniel Goneman observed that there is a phenomenon called emotional contagion. According to this specialist, when a person feels an emotion, for example, affection toward others, this person tends to infect others with this emotion and they tend to experience the same emotional state and act accordingly. Why does this happen? Because we have in our brains mirror neurons which replicate the emotional states experienced by others who interact with us. These specialists also observe that love, compassion, empathy are connected to the concept of emotional intelligence, which implies recognizing our own emotions and expressing them overtly and wisely and also developing more loving, more compassionate relationship with others. In business, there is a principle called interdependent that was mentioned by Covey. According to this principle, no company can succeed on its own 
No company can thrive by itself. To succeed, companies need the support from buyers, suppliers, employees, community members. We call these stakeholders, individuals and groups with interest in our organization. So when a company treats its stakeholders in a loving way, which means developing win-win relationship with them, these stakeholders tend to support our company in an unconditional way. So treating others in a loving way contributes to the development of much more loving, much warmer work environment and business environment. Barsade and O'Neill observe that a work environment which is loving tend to bring about higher employee satisfaction, higher customer satisfaction, lower employee turnover, lower employee absenteeism, and lower stress levels. All these indicators impact positively on the bottom line, which means profits. Are there any examples of loving companies? UPS, the global courier company, is an example of a loving company. This company is loving with the environment because it reduces carbon dioxide emission, which pollute the environment. But this company is also loving with its employees, its part-time employees, because it's helping them take up college courses. Lush, the company that sells cosmetic products, natural cosmetic products, is an example of a loving company. This company is loving with its customer because it's providing its customer with natural products made from fresh organic fruits and vegetables. Another example of a loving company is Tom's, a company which sells shoes. This company is loving with communities because this company has been donating millions of shoes to communities. When a company treats its employees in a loving way, which means requiring them to work a reasonable number of hours, recognizing their contribution, paying a fair salary, these employees will tend to go the extra mile they will tend to support the company in an unconditional way. Instead, when employees are not treated in a loving way, these employees will tend to look for other job opportunities elsewhere if possible, or if not, they will work by the book. When a company treats its customer in a loving way, which means helping them decide the best product for them, this customer will tend to come back and might even recommend this company to others. Instead, when customers are not treated in a loving way, this customer will tend to switch from this organization to other organization. When a company treats its suppliers in a loving way, which means developing win-win agreement with its suppliers, this supplier will tend to support the company when needed. Instead, when suppliers are not treated in a loving way, these suppliers might even break up the relationship with this company. And when a company treats its community in a loving way, which means donating resources, training community members, this community will tend to support the company when needed. Instead, when a company does not treat the community in a loving way, this community might even boycott the company products and services. So it's important to highlight the relationship between love and business activities. And this is connected to the concept of the triple bottom line, which means companies should care for profits, which are very important. Companies should care for people, individuals, customers, suppliers, community members, and employees, and companies should care for the planet. For instance, being environmentally friendly, using renewable sources of energy, recycling. Many companies wrongly focus on improving key performance indicators such as profitability, productivity, efficiency, instead of developing more loving more supportive relationship with these stakeholders. And this is the wrong approach. Why? Because we have to understand that these key performance indicators are always the natural result of the interaction between a company and its stakeholders. Therefore, when a company develops more loving relationship with their stakeholders, these key performance indicators, profitability, productivity, efficiency, tend to improve in a natural way. I hope that you like this idea and you spread it widely. And I want to leave you with a question for you to ask yourself. How can I be more loving? How can I be more supportive in my work environment? How can I be more loving in the business environment? Thank you very much.